So what's the political antidote? What, if, what does a smart, progressive politician do to, to take this head on? There's a big difference between understanding what drives Trump's voters and sympathizing with Trump and his policies. And if you do not take it seriously that these people have real and legitimate grievances and it's not just all racism, because then you have to explain something very weird, why it is that a huge number of counties in the five states that fell, the blue wall, voted for Obama not just once but twice because they all suddenly become racist, mm -hmm. right? So that's obviously part of it. We simply need to, uh, I went to see the movie Black Klansman, shout out for that, it's a fantastic film. But at the end, the way that it plugs in what happened in uh, Charlottesville, is incredible. Let's not downplay this, but let's not reduce everything to that. Because then you can't explain why you have left-wing populism in Europe. Mm -hmm. right? There's a whole series of these cases. This is a global phenomenon, not just one thing. And it comes basically from the interaction of three things. Number one, you've had a massive increase in inequality. You've had a massive increase in people's felt sense of fragility, that their life chances have been altered. The, I'll give you an example, a terrifying story. A month ago, a woman falls off the Green Line platform in Boston. You know about this mm -hmm. one? and she splits her leg open, like skin, bone, the whole lot. She's in agony. People run towards her to help her start making a call. She shouts out, for God's sake, don't call an ambulance. That's $3,000, I can't afford that. <laughs> now, when you've built a society that's that tightly wound and that fragile, whereby there are people at the top who literally have made off with everything over the past 30 years, lots of different narratives will explain that, but all of them will be polarizing. And what Trump did was walk right into the middle of that, and capture it because the mainstream political parties were utterly oblivious to it because they spent 10 years talking to each other about how wonderful the world was at Davos seminars. <laughs> Nobody went to Wisconsin to find out what it was like 10 years ago and now. And what Trump did was walk into the middle of that and say, yeah, you guys, you're not so hot on trade, are you? Yeah, and what about this? And what about that? And that coalition just came to him.